And on to labor matters. The meeting on the ongoing negotiations on new minimum wage has been adjoined till Wednesday after the organized labor rejected a new 54,000 Naira minimum wage proposed by the federal government. Tuesday's meeting came as a result of the walkout staged by members of the organized labor following the proposal of 48,000 Naira as minimum wage by the federal government during last week's meeting. During that meeting, the organized private sector had also proposed 54,000 Naira. The national president of Nigeria Labor Congress, Joa Jaure, insisted on 615,000 Naira minimum wage, arguing that the amount was arrived at after an analysis of the current economic situation and the needs of an average Nigerian family of six. And now to discuss this further, I'm being joined by a labor lawyer, Iro Luwa Uguntiwesha uh, Tua. Uh, Irolua, many thanks for coming on. I appreciate you for doing this with us. Let's get started very quickly. What do you make of the new minimum wage offer of 54,000 Naira by the federal government? Well, um, I, I, would, I would just say that, uh, number one, is a welcome development that both the federal government and the labor, you know, they are even negotiating on this. Because if there's a situation of trade disputes, like we're seeing now, it is very important for the disputants to come to the negotiation table and negotiate so that there cannot be a total breakdown. So to that extent, I think um, I would appreciate both parties, you know, for coming together in the interest of Nigerians to resolve um, this particular autonomy issue. But um, on a more serious note, with regards to the 54,000 being proposed by the federal government, I think one thing the federal government needs to do is to draw out parameters upon which they are making that proposal. Because if we look at what the labor did by making a proposal of 615,000 initially, they drew out parameters upon which they are making that proposal. So if we look at it and we, if we consider the trajectory, the federal government had earlier made a proposal of 48,000 and they moved from there to 54,000. I think it's very important not to just, you know, tempt the, the patience of Nigerians and you come out, you, 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 you come out in an analytical manner as to say that we're making a proposal of 48,000, this proposal is based on this yastic, this proposal is based on this um, anticipated revenue that we're going to generate, this proposal is based on this rate of inflation, this proposal is based on generally the, the rate of transportation, the rate of housing, everything that concerns employees in Nigeria. I think if federal government comes out like this to analyze the basis upon which they are proposing the new minimum wage, I think that that, 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 that that would make more sense and, and it would be more reasonable to labor and to Nigeria and other than they are just making um, an open proposal. I, I think it, like as if it's just an open negotiation. I don't think that's going to work. They must be analytical and they must be very, very proactive. They must come out and lay foundation, yastic parameters upon which they are making the proposal. I think if they're able to do that, then the labor should be able to reason alongside with them. But for what they are doing, I, I, I just think it's very open and it's very, very ambiguous. Uh, I mean, uh, like you, you rightfully put it there, the NLC have, uh, you know, they've brought out their data to, 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 to sort of support their number, which is 615,000. Um, I mean, this is going to sound very, uh, for the, so just humor me, right, for the sake of our viewers. This current proposed figure of 54,000 naira, let's compare it to the cost of living in Nigeria. Does the government have a claim? Can they say that? Would it be? Can can they claim that it will be sufficient to support a decent standard of living for workers? That, that's a very intelligent question. Now, decent standard of living and dignity of labor are one of the foundations upon which international labor convention is premised. Unfortunately, Nigeria is one of the members and signatory to a lot of convention. You know, under the international labor convention. That on one side. And I think on the other hand, we need to distinguish the side upon which labor is coming from and the side upon which federal government is coming from. There is a difference between living wage and minimum wage. That's one thing that people need to know. Now, labor is making the proposal of 615000 on the basis of the fact that that should be the minimum living wage. Now, living wage in its sense is the, the amount that employees can earn in order for them to afford you know, they, what, what they can do. For example, their food, their clothing, their shelter, 
anything that is very important to them, significant to their lifestyle, you know, in order for them to afford it, that is the amount that labor is putting. But minimum wage is different from that. Minimum wage is regulated by minimum wage act. Minimum wage is the amount that is regulated by law in which the least amount that is payable to any employee. If you look at section nine of the minimum wage act, it says that an employer cannot pay less than the amount of the minimum wage. So labor is coming from the aspect of a living wage. And the federal government is coming from the angle of a minimum wage. Now, analytically, the difference between the living wage and the minimum wage should not be so far apart. While it may not be impossible for labor to achieve the, the living wage that they're asking for, I, I think the proposal that the federal government is making as 54,000 minimum wage is also too far apart. So I think both parties can actually sit down and come to an amicable resolution. And in coming to an amicable resolution, both parties also need to understand, for example, on the part of labor, the living wage they are proposing may not be so reasonable, given the fact that they, 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 they are using a family of six using a family of six in what state? Because the living wage, the amount that you need to be comfortable in Lagos is different from the amount that you need to be comfortable in Ibadan and in some other state like that. So that analysis needs to be properly made. And the federal government should also make the analysis very well so that parties can reasonably come to a conclusion. So as far as I'm saying it right now, for me, I don't think the 615 living wage that labor is proposing, I do not think that it is reasonable enough. Because how many families are, are a family of six? How many families are living in Lagos? All these things need to be properly juxtaposed it, before labor can also um, analytically arrive at an appropriate living wage. Erelua, um, I'm so glad you were able to put, uh, you, uh, for one of your answers that you kept saying, you know, going back to the table, continuous conversation, but I mean, there must be potential consequences of this continuous rejection of the federal government's, you know, proposals uh, by by organized labor, right? Their proposal of this amount. Do you see this leading to a further industrial action or strikes? Because I mean, we are we at a time now that we don't need strikes. Now, I, I will tell you for certain, as a labor law expert, I've never favored strike because over time, strike has not achieved anything meaningful. If they go on strike two days, three days, or at most a week, which I don't think so, they would always come back. So, and within that period, you know, we, the citizens, would suffer. Nigeria would have lost a lot of revenue. So, I think that strike has never been an option. In lieu of strike, I've always proposed picketing. And picketing is um, a non confrontational way in which citizens can actually bear their grievance in line with Chapter 4, Section 39 of um, the 1999 Convention and also Section 42. So I think I would propose picketing in the event that um, probably the negotiation is slowing down because picketing is a way that people will show their grievance and that will put more pressure on the government. Don't forget that we are at a time of internet aid now. So any picketing that labor does and probably other, other organized labor sectors also support them will receive, you know, a, a, will receive much, um, much, much communication. And um, this will, will spell, uh, this will not mean good for the government in the image, you know, their, their image will be smeared in the eyes of the international community. So I think that these are the things labor can do. Pursue picketing in lieu of industrial action, because industrial action will not achieve anything. They will go on industrial action, will lose revenue, and they will still come back. But if they picket and you know they flood the streets, all organized labor sectors, I think that will make more impact. You know, positively, they can achieve their aim. While at the same time, they can equally use that to draw government to the table in order to also achieve their aim. Eroloa, many thanks for coming on. I appreciate you for doing this with us. Yeah, thank you for having me.